You know, I think it's about that time that we look up just how good Blazor jobs are. You know, the whole channel relies on this one technology. I'm sure you're all interested to see just how much investment and return on investment you're going to get in. So let's check it out. On Dice.com, we have one, two, three jobs only for Blazor. Uh-oh. Oh, no, boys. I think we made a mistake. So in today's video, we're going to dive into a little bit of the Blazor job market as it is currently in 2022. And the easy way to do that is simply to look up what Blazor jobs are out there for you and how much they cost and whether or not it's feasible that there is an actual good job market out there. Because, you know, uh, uh, the what do you call it? Fortran exists, but it's not the best job market out there. But they pay you a lot of money to learn it. But again, I probably I wouldn't go out of my way to learn it. Anyways, I got the idea off this Reddit post, and essentially people are saying, you know, their opinions on the matter, and is and uh, that the the gist of all this is says that Blazor is still pretty new, that the thing that you're actually looking for are C Sharp and .NET developers, and if Blazor comes up, it usually is because there is a transfer from Razor to Blazor, and. The, the, you know, the main concession is that it's still too new in the job market and that there are still viable other technologies that have Blazor's market functionality, like React and Angular, along with Razor as well. So there's a lot of factors that go into finding a job that requires Blazor, but it doesn't mean that there aren't any jobs that require Blazor. So although in the DICE example, yes, I only was able to find just looking for Blazor and Remote or USA, three jobs. But Dice isn't the only place out here. Like, um, Dice has its own like. I don't know what Dice does, but for whatever reason, they only have three, and it seems that this individual only looked on Dice for these jobs. And this was nine months ago, so it's understandable that nine months ago these jobs were were very few and far between. But we there are other websites that exist, and there's other places you could look at. One of those places being Indeed. So what do we have here on Indeed? There's actually 400 jobs, more or less uh that have blazer in it somewhere so if we look at the experience level most of these jobs are mid-level jobs then senior levels and then the the one with the least amount of jobs are entry level and if i filter for entry level jobs here and look at what the year how many years we're looking for uh doesn't say but unfortunately when it comes to these jobs even if they put in for like like, I hate when they do this. Like when they put, like, entry level and whatever, they'll sometimes say you need three years and stuff. So I wouldn't trust this really much. So we'll just consider that the... I would just go with the notion that when it comes to Blazor jobs specifically, they might be looking for people without already have .NET experience. So that is one of the factors that goes into finding a Blazor work. Now, not to say that there isn't any entry level jobs. I'm just saying that most of the jobs are going to be people who already have .NET experience. And that, that goes for any technology, honestly. Like, most technologies are looking for people who already know the job. So it's nothing too far-fetched to see it happen here as well. Um, and ZipCruder, another website that has these jobs, there are also quite a number of them. Here's 57. And unfortunately, because my email doesn't want to work with it, I can't really open up some of them. Some of them I can, some of them I can't. So I can open up this one, at least. This is in Fort Lauderdale. And this particular one, it doesn't tell me what the experience is, but the fact that they're looking for a full stack developer and not like an intern or, or someone that's entry level, this tells me that you need quite a bit of experience to do. So again, this is also happening here where uh, these jobs are limited to mid and senior level positions. They're not that many entry level positions, but again, that is a trend in all software development that basically what we want, they want to find are people who already have experience. But that also tells you that if you are already in the .NET and C Sharp space, which is what most of my audience is, like they're either uh, in the beginning of their careers, but they have some experience, or they're already in the middle of their careers, and they have a pretty decent amount of experience and are looking to pivot into other technologies. That is the majority of my particular audience. So if you're in that category, you should be fine because as long as you have some .NET development experience, you can pivot into Blazor much more easy than if you're just starting out. But it doesn't mean that it's impossible for you. And then, I, of course, I go on to LinkedIn, another place where we can look for jobs and recruiters. So in this place, 
if I do this, there are 142 remote jobs and 416 on-site jobs with, you know, some hybrids here and there, 41. So does this allow me to put experience level? So if I go entry level, that's not so bad. Again, you got to take this with a grain of salt. When they say entry level, like that, that can vary. But let's just see what we have for entry level jobs here. Contract entry level. Oh, yeah, that's right. The contracting stuff. You got to be in Columbus, Ohio, so it's not remote. It's unfortunate. But again, three years of experience, that is not entry level. Five years of experience? Come on. Come on. I, I hate when they do this. Like, you want to look for an entry level job, and they're like, oh, yeah, this is entry level. Three years of experience. Five years of experience. Full stack developer with experience. Like, that's so stupid. What do we have? Anything that's actually of entry level? I'm more interested in that now. So I know I'm going off on a tangent, but what do we have here? Entry level. Hmm. It doesn't really say. Developer. Minimum of five years. I'm going to stop. This is depressing me. It's making me mad. But at the very minimum, you see that there actually are a lot of jobs out there for Blazor. And there's a lot of jobs out there. Specifically for Blazor, there's a lot of jobs out there. For .NET, there's even more so because I've just narrowed it down to just jobs that are requiring Blazor itself. Uh, another place where you can look for jobs is actually Upwork. Upwork is a place where if you're doing contracting or freelancing, you can go here to look for anyone that requires jobs or whatever. And there are actually quite a few Blazor jobs. I'm actually rather impressed by the fact that there are Blazor jobs on Upwork already. Um, but, you know, they exist. Doesn't really tell me how much there are. Oh, 33 Blazor jobs. So they're all contract stuff. So if you want to, like, get in on some contracting, this is another place you could do it. There aren't that many, but they do exist for Blazor only. I'm pretty sure if we just switched it out to .NET, so if instead I look for .NET developer or just C-sharp.net, you'll find a lot more. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of .NET people here. .NET Sharp. What we got? 53 jobs. Very interesting. Bulb jobs. That is weird. Why am I getting different results for different things? Anyways, .NET developer is really what you want to look for when you're looking for a Blazor job. If you find one with Blazor in it, that's great. Uh, they're not going to be as many out there, but there are far more out there than there was before. So I think that in the nine months between when this guy wrote this and now there are actually more jobs than there were before. It is still a fledgling framework and there are still a lot. Of, there's still a lot of competition out there with React, Angular and even some .NET uh, front end. There is prospect of growth for it in the future because as .NET keeps, uh, you know, getting more, you know, keeps updating. Blazor will keep being updated and Blazor is being pushed into the Maui development space as well. So Blazor is going to have more utility in the long run. Um, this is really just investment in the early days in order to get into the ground floor for later. Because eventually, um, I believe Razor might um, stop being updated as much because there might be more and more adoption into Blazor as it is newer and it still uses Razor pages. So it's not that far-fetched to think that Sooner or later, companies will start adopting Blazor uh, as they go forward, especially when .NET needs to be updated. And it's very, very painful, in case you don't know, to migrate from 4.8 to .NET 6. There's a lot of stuff you have to do, and that's where Razor usually is in that space between 3.5 and 4.8. So it sometimes is easier to just go into the Blazor space. But as of right now, there actually are a fair amount of jobs, not as much admittedly as React or Angular. I don't even have to look this up. I already know, obviously, because they've already been existing prior to Blazor. Um, 
when it comes to job prospects in the future, I do see more and more people developing them, especially with the amount of money that is being offered for Blazor right now or from the examples here. They are in line with what the average developer makes. In fact, some of them go a little bit further. So we have 100K more or less here, 111K, 136. I made a whole video on it before between uh, Blazor and React. And then at the end of the video is where I went into the market differences. So you're going to hear me say basically the same thing here. Um, that one of the ways you can look at whether or not your technology is doing well is how many jobs there are and what you're being paid for. And this is in line with the amount of payment that you get for any other software development job, at least on average. So Blazor is still doing pretty well. And there are more jobs, it seems now than before. In 2018, that's when it came out. It's now 2022, four years later. So there's actually some adoption to it and very high level, or at least average to high level uh, salaries being offered for someone who can do Blazor development. It is still not mainstream. There's still a lot of competition for it, but I believe this is the future path that's being taken, especially with Microsoft um, looking at .NET MAUI and mixing it with Blazor as well. So Blazor will not only cover your web application development needs, it will also cover your mobile needs if you go into the .NET MAUI uh, development. So, oh no, I think it's looking up for Blazor. It is still a little slow right now. But I think it just takes time to give this adoption. And in lieu of the fact that uh, there are still other competitive frameworks, it's going to be a little bit slower. It's not like before where React and Angular basically came out of a, a space where the competition wasn't that good, to be honest. Like they were competing against Razor and they were competing against like pure JavaScript. And then obviously because of the ease of use and how flexible they were, they, they were dominated the system. But Microsoft has the potential to do it because it is also backed by a big company, just like Angular and React are backed by the respective companies. There is a market for them. There is a growing market uh, interest in that. And Microsoft is pushing Blazor into other places, including Maui, which will be its mobile, uh, its mobile counterpart to other JavaScript frameworks. So I think things are at least looking up. It does look like it is the runt of the bunch. So between Angular, React, and Blazor, Angular and React have the bigger market share. But I wouldn't fret for that because as long as you have .NET and C Sharp under your belt, you can go into basically any .NET or C Sharp framework. And eventually you can get into a Blazor job if you so want to. And if you are already in the .NET or C Sharp uh, framework, then it's still pretty good to learn Blazor because this is the future essentially. So that's the way I see things. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have more pessimistic views or more optimistic views. Please let me know in the comments section. And, you know, I'll work on some more videos later. For now, you know, please enjoy it. And thank you very much. Keep subscribing and liking and, and commenting.